Good morning. Um, Kevin asked me to speak and share a little bit about myself for a couple minutes. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing a hat. I wear it because I have no hair, though I'm very excited that the fuzz has started. Um, I shared with him a little bit about my journey over the last couple of years. And approximately four years ago, just over four years ago actually, I was diagnosed with cancer. And it was one of those times when you're young and at 36, I was like, wow, are you sure? Do you know this for sure? And the part of me that sat there and threw my hands up in the air and said, God, really? I was a missionary for four years. I'm a teacher now, inner city Cincinnati. I don't have time for this. But I had to walk that journey. And in the process of walking that journey, I learned a lot. And I made some mistakes on the way. And after I had the, I had to have surgery and after everything, I would lay there a lot of nights and I would think, you know, I asked people to pray for me, but I never went to my church. I never went to the elders, never asked the church to pray as a whole, never went to the elders, never was anointed. I really wonder if the healing process for me would have been a lot better. And I have spent the last couple of years Several times over and over again, I would pray and just say, God, please forgive me because I really missed the boat. And I, I should have done that. I think things would have been different because the healing process emotionally was really difficult. And then the call came in December and it was back. And this time it had gone to my lungs, not the place that this cancer goes to. Very highly unusual. And I was shocked and I went... Again, when I got the call, I was like, really? And your mind starts thinking, it's back again. And at this point in time, it's not good. It's in my lungs. The fear was pretty hard and pretty high. I remember checking with my dad. My dad's been friends with Kevin for several years and thinking, we don't do a traditional Christmas service at all at the church I was going to at the time and I'm like I really miss Christmas music and again the fear of maybe this is my last Christmas and this is my last chance to go sing Christmas carols so I checked with I talked to him I was like do you think Crossview does a really con, you know like a Christmas carols and things like we live so close it'd be really nice I was going to a church um, a little bit further out and he was like, yeah. He goes, you know, if you want to go to church on Sunday, he's like, we'll go with you so you don't have to sit down and go by yourself and be in a church with people you don't really know. So we came and thoroughly enjoyed it. And two days later, I sat down with my oncologist and found out that, yes, it's in your lungs. He's like, there's spots all over both lungs and a couple nodules. And he's like, this is not healable by surgery. It's not healable by radiation therapy. You have to have chemo. And I'm sitting there looking at him and I'm like, am I gonna be able to work? I teach. And then I looked at him and I smiled and said, and remember, I teach inner city school. I'm in an inner city school right now in Dayton. <clears throat> I'm like, they don't walk in, sit down silently and just do their work. It's not how it runs. Um, this is not the normal. People just sitting quietly listening to me. I'm used to a lot of action. And he just smiled, and he goes, you're going to be really tired. And I thought, oh, great, this is strike one. And then he said, but, yeah, you should be able to, as, you know, he's like, some people are, so hopefully you'll be able to. And I just was like, okay, well, we'll go forward. This is my only option. And I asked him, I said, well, what's the chances that this is going to go away? And he put his head down, and he looked, he goes, truthfully, he's like, I don't know. He goes, you can do chemo, and three things are going to happen. One of three. He's like, it's going to get bigger and not respond. It's going to stay the same, or it's going to go away. And he goes, and I go, okay, and what if it does go away? And he goes, it's most likely not going to go away, and you are most likely within the next few years going to be gone from it because it's going to keep coming back. So I left, and you the thoughts again of, oh goodness, this might be it. So I began to pray just for myself and I prayed, asked other people that I knew that were close to pray and just said, ask them like direction, like what's going on? What do I do? How does this work? 
In the process, I realized that I was going to be sick. So I honestly, I was sharing this with Kevin last week, I honestly came to Crossview because I thought, if I'm doing chemo, I need to be five minutes from my house, and I literally live five minutes away. And I go, I need to be five minutes away because if I get sick during service, I need to be able to run and get home fast. And so I switched and then fell in love with the church. And it was by late January that I was like that idea of praying with the elders. And when I was in fifth grade, I was challenged to memorize the book of James. And while I still cannot quote it anymore, it happens to be my favorite book of the Bible. And when I am struggling at any point in time, it is my go-to book. It is the one that I see, for some reason, the most grace of any book in the Bible. And in the, the end of chapter 5, as it's quoted many times, we see verses 13, 14, and 15, but especially in 14, is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the per- sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. I chose to make the call, and I asked the elders to come and pray for me and anoint me with oil. And so I came on a Monday night, and I did that at one of the elder meetings. It was at that point in time that I have been filled with peace since the end of January until, I think actually maybe the beginning of February is when I had it done, but from then until now, to the point where last week on Saturday when I had my CT scan to find out what was going on and how I had responded through my six treatments, I still felt a sense of peace and I knew that I was healed one way or the other, that I was either going to be healed by God here on earth or he was going to take me home and I was going to be healed and either answer was going to be okay. I was blessed because five hours after my CT scan, my oncologist called to tell me that it was all clear. He rarely gets to say that, but it was, he's like three times, there's no cancer. Oh my goodness, there's no cancer. So I just wanted to say thank you and just share with you guys that wonderful power of prayer and how the anointing of the elders and being obedient has played well.